Welcome to today's manager method video. In these videos, I tend to talk for a few minutes on a work topic or do an HR role play, which is what it can be like if you have a conversation as a manager about a topic you need help with. In today's, we're going to do a little bit of both. We're going to go through ChatGPT, and I'm going to screen share to show how you can use ChatGPT for things like job postings, but how you still need that human voice. So in this, in a few minutes, we'll run through ways you can use it. So if you haven't used ChatGPT, or you've used it, but not for this way, it's to point out different things to think about as you use it functionally for work. I'm gonna share my screen. Here we go. So if you haven't used ChatGPT, ChatGPT is chat.openai.com. That's how you can get to it on the web. And you can create a login. You can either have ChatGPT as a free version or have plus. So I have plus, which helps a little bit, but you can really do a lot of the same in the free version. So in this, you send a message. So this is a prompt. So you can send all sorts of things, like I need a grocery list. But for today, let's say, I tend to say please to ChatGPT. I don't know why. Please write a job posting for an, let's say, account manager role. It's kind of a common role. So let's see what comes together. So you can see ChatGPT thinks for a little bit, and it'll put it together. So here's So as you look at this, this tends to look like exactly like a job posting you might see, a lot of them online. If you look at a LinkedIn or something like that, or a career site, job title, company, location, job, full-time. Now you may get excited about this and think, perfect, we can copy and paste this into our career site. Here's my caution. When you wanna use ChatGPT, I think it's a phenomenal way to get started on so many things. But the gap is you need to make sure that you're taking a human eye to it. So lawyers over the weekend were talking about how a lawyer in an actual legal case had used ChatGPT for legal research. Now, if you see this caveat at the bottom, ChatGPT may have inaccurate information about people, places, or facts. This came by to bite a lawyer who used it for legal research, asking for cases, and then even tried to say, are these real cases? And ChatGPT said, said they sure are, but they weren't. So now that lawyer is facing sanctions in front of the court for not using a vetted legal tool like um, Westlaw or LexisNexis for lawyers. And so part of the gap to be careful for is a couple things. One is ChatGPT is not an encyclopedia. It does not have all of the information in the world. And so it cautions it right here. So it's important to think anything you put out there. If you're doing a generic job posting, you may not worry so much about inaccurate facts, but you should always look through and make sure what it's what's in, in there, that there's not some sort of fact that's talking about that doesn't make sense for your company. Another thing to keep in mind is that ChatGPT is not a diary. So when you send messages and things like that through ChatGPT, it's using it intentionally for research. That's how AI can work. It can become smarter, so it can help um, it can learn kind of your voice, but also all sorts of searches. So you never want to put information in there, like an actual um, candidate's name, uh, address, or personal information like that, because ChatGPT is not your diary. It is very much a public forum for things like that. But so getting a hint, uh, head start on job postings, I think is great. But here's my, my take on some of it. So if you take this, okay, about us. So job posting starts out talking about the company. Job description, this is what you're going to do. Responsibilities, here we go. Requirements, here we go. What we offer, we are proud to be an equal opportunity employer. We employer, we celebrate diversity committed to creating an inclusive environment for all employees. And how to apply. These will be open until closing date. There's a lot of things in this posting I actually think are really good. Certain things like um, talking about the organization altogether or in this, being really specific with some of the software that's required, things you may need to know and what we offer, competitive salary. And even some of this language, like we celebrate diversity committed to creating an inclusive environment. And this can be really great language. Um, and also providing an insight into when applications will be accepted. Only those selected for an interview will be contacted. I'll start from the bottom with some of the things that I think can actually turn candidates off and can be unfair in a hiring process. One is I understand what it can be like. For those that have posted a job, you may see anywhere from 100 to 1,000 or more applicants. It can be really overwhelming. But when people do go through the process to submit an application, people often expect to get a response. Many of those, you may get an automated type email of thank you for your interest, but you're not selected. But closing that loop can be a really key process in preserving the dignity of those that apply and set you apart rather than just if we will let you know if we're gonna contact you. So having some sort of automated process is a best practice. And then as the interview process goes along, 
giving people uh, more feedback. So those that have taken time to interview. But overall, just saying only those selected for an interview will be contacted can come off really cold to those that think I applied for a ton of jobs and didn't hear back on so many of them. So even if you have an automated process for declining candidates that aren't selected for an interview is a better pet practice, but that GPT is suggesting otherwise. So this, I really like this, how it is including how to submit, but saying how to submit your resume and cover letter. You can look all over social media with opinions on cover letters now. And so thinking about is cover letters something you really that you really want and to have candidates do that. Because in particular, if you're asking candidates to create that individual cover letter to you, but you're telling them that you're not going to contact them, then that can send a message to candidates of, you know, you want me to go through this effort, but not you. So right now, cover letters, a lot of organizations aren't requiring those and are just having um, a, a resume. But so thinking about is this, so spelling out exactly how you want it to apply. But some of the things to be mindful of in here are, for example, what we offer, competitive structure, competitive salary with a bonus structure. Well, right now in, uh, in the U.S., while there's no federal requirement, many states and cities are now requiring salary transparency. So you've seen that in Colorado, now California, more places are having this, so you actually have to provide a range. So some language like this wouldn't be allowed. Again, ChatGPT isn't claiming that it's legally binding, so you may want to have that salary range. And so including that. So let's say here, what you can do with ChatGPT is it's iterative. So I can send a message and tell it to change it a little bit. So I'm not going to say please this time, but I'm going to say change this to include a salary range. So now it's going to adjust this and come up with a new posting, and it's going to have this salary range. So here's something I like is that it does include this range up top. And I actually like that the range is tighter because sometimes you look at postings now and they'll say like 50,000 to 150,000 or more, but also based on experience. Well, for my recommendation from the human lens is when you have this, a lot of organizations now that have salary ranges, it looks a lot like this. Whereas you look at it, it kind of feels like it's like, ugh, that they're including it just because they have to. But I think the best companies with the really good hiring processes will look at this as an opportunity to communicate candidates and have their transparency. My recommendation is as much as possible, including that salary range, whether it's required or not, because research shows that a lot of candidates will only apply when there is that salary range included, but also based on experience. Well, what does that mean? So I think specifying this. So as an account manager to say, you know, if you have and you have um yeah, you'll need you know, significant training on some sort of software solution, or you haven't handled accounts that are more enterprise accounts, meaning like a large organization, then it may be more lower on the salary range. But being really specific about what that experience looks like is an opportunity to have that transparency. Because otherwise, a lot of candidates will just want that 80,000. If you haven't articulated what that would look like in the range between the two, then you're missing out on an opportunity to communicate. That's why I say ChatGPT can add this in here. But it's also not thinking about the candidate's perspective. So that's why it's important to have that human lens. So let's so as you look about these, some of the other things as you think about with job postings. So things like responsibilities. Okay, build and maintain long-lasting customer relationships, forecasts. These are probably all accurate. But between the responsibilities and the requirements, you know, some of these requirements, bachelor's degree in business administration, sales, or relevant field. Well, there may be some really great account managers out there that don't have a degree, and you may miss out on that by having this language you pulled from JatGPT. So for a lot of positions, rethinking whether a degree or certification is actually required or what it adds to the, to the role. At times, it may be a real benefit or needed, but rethinking that degree requirement, because at times you may have a situation where someone's great, but they don't apply because you're requiring this, and this is the first thing you say. At other times, candidates may have significant student loan payments. And so as you're saying, you have to have this bachelor's degree in business administration, but you're paying a $60,000 salary. Well, that could end up turning candidates off if they can't afford their student loan payments and everything else because of this requirement. So I think reframing these to think the requirements and rather than just saying responsibilities and requirements, delineating these a bit to say like what it'll look like from day one including what the onboarding process looks like, that training process, the shadowing, what time it, it, you may have, like 90 days to get them up to be really mo moving on their own. So spelling out more of this from the human lens about what that experience is like for the candidate. 
And yes, this is the job posting, but this is the first opportunity you'll have to have eyes from an employee that may end up being one of the best employees at your organization. So spelling that out and taking that can be helpful rather than just having the chat GPT language that looks like every other job posting that they're applying to. This is how you can stand out as an organization. And again, instead of requirements, rethinking bachelor's degree, and instead of saying expectations from you or things like that to talk more about a candidate, but talking about the cat, the things that you care about most. So talking to the others in that position or, um, talking to an employee if they, they're leaving. What are things that you think most matter? And so really being specific rather than just having the generic language that you may be pulling from ChatGPT, the ChatGPT is likely learned because this is what a lot of postings look like, but how you can stand out. And then same thing, so what we offer. Competitive salary. We've talked about this. Talking about what that looks like and what information you can provide. Is it, annual, is it looked at annually? Is it reviewed? The more specific you can get in here, the more transparent and beneficial it can be as you're trying to attract candidates. Opportunity for professional growth and advancement. Well, specifically, what does that mean? So in, we'll give an example. If I'm looking for a role or a lot of people are looking for roles as account manager, they may say, okay, what is that management track? And you may say, current chief customer officer started as an account manager and transitioned in their role. That's great information that people would love to see in an actual job posting. So rethinking it from what ChatGPT is pulling up to you, but how to give specifics about what growth paths can look like. A dynamic and supportive work environment. Again, what does that look like? So if that's a situation that talks about paid time off and saying, when you're on time off, we want you to focus on, on recharging your family, your friends, including very specific information like that, rather than just this, in, this language that ChatGPT is suggesting. Comprehensive benefits package, including health, dental, and vision. You know, these things do matter. But a lot of times, even in the U.S. where benefits are tied to employment, some places have them, some places don't, depending on the size of the organization, but having some of those spe specialized benefits in particular. And this can be an opportunity. Some organizations now will have things like pet insurance. I guarantee you, a lot of people are glossing through and saying, okay, health, dental, vision, cool, normal. But if you see an organization that says, we have pet insurance as, as an offering, there are going to be people that are, you know, pet owners can be really passionate about that type of thing. And so that can attract one of you, a candidate that you're really interested in to say, oh, that's very cool. And so thinking about the very specific things that your organization. And so then also how to apply and rethinking this resume cover letter. Is that really information you're going to be looking through? Or is it for your end having places like a LinkedIn or thinking about the different places you can target this at? Um, and so these are some of the ways I think to rethink uh, as you use ChatGPT. And so there's all sorts of other ways that you can adjust this. For example, if I want to say change to include more information about what goes into the salary range, let's see what comes up. Based on experience. Now, well, now it says based on experience and qualifications. Let's see if it adds anything more in the actual text as we go through this. So you see in, in this, and again, it can, it can generate it pretty quickly. But so a lot of these, let's see the job description up above. So job description looks the same about us, job description, responsibilities, all of that. But let's see if it's providing more information in there. That same as the same requirements. But you see this, what you can use with ChatGT really is to tweak it. So we'll see what it, what it comes up with if there's any more information about it. But if not, this is where the human lens is really important. So using ChatGPT for things like a standardized um, job posting, but really getting specific. Finally, salary will be candidates experience qualifications and complexity of the portfolio they manage. Look, this has more language, but still I think getting specific as much as possible in really thinking candidly, what does that look, what does a $60,000 candidate look like? What does an $80,000 candidate look like? And your answer may be hmm, based on, you know, based on how well they negotiate. Well, really thinking about what you want to give and making sure you're not basing that based on their prior salary, for example, because in a lot of places that's illegal in the U.S., but really having that specific so that candidates understand what that looks like with a lot of specificity. So anyway, this is a quick lesson on, on ChatGPT, how you can use it, how you can use it in iterative processes. And so I really encourage people to go and play around. But don't take the opportunity to just copy and paste. 
every time use it to help to get yourself started, but then adding those specifics and thinking about what is this? This is, you spend so much time on market research for marketing. This is market research for your candidates. So really being intentional about who you're attracting, how you're attracting them, and what you can add that are real specifics that make your organization and this posting stand out. So that's lesson for today. If there's other things you'd like to see with ChatGPT, let me know because I'm happy to rotate those into these Tuesday videos.